Welcome back to day five of Sketching with Jennifer. Hope you're doing really well and that you're making lots of art in your life already this week. It is Friday, May 1st. How did it get to be May? It seems like the last couple of months have just gone on forever and now it's May and the world is changing and it's supposed to be 70 degrees today. Uh, so I hope that you can um, make some art this morning and then get out and enjoy or look out and enjoy uh, the beautiful weather and the changing world around us. Um, every day you see me in my home studio. Some days you'll see me at Tabor, but today I'm in my home studio and right behind me is this painting. It's about um, it's about four feet by four feet, a little bit bigger than four feet by four feet. And it's by one of my favorite artists, Carmel Anderson. She lives in um, Alaska. And she has for years and years, probably the last 20 years, she was a, she was a very big um, clothing designer in New York City. And now she, uh, in the last 20 years, has gone to painting. And she really looks at women in, in the art in her art and she really is inspired by the women in her life so I had a chance for a number of years to work with Carmel and um, we did some exchange I did some some um, some things for her she did some things for me and um, and, and a result of it was I got this amazing painting at least I think it's amazing a lot of people say that's really weird why do you like that well the reason I like it is that it's Carmel's painting but it is my niece's. So um, Hannah is here. This is my niece Hannah when she was uh, about four. And this is my niece Ariana when she was about two. And um, the girls have grown up now. They're 13 and 15. But they really inspire me uh, and remind me to keep uh, childlike qualities in my art. They're really amazing girls and I wanted to capture them as little children and they were little children when this was painted and it was so fun to have Carmel work with their image and uh, in, and in her style which of course has changed over the years but back then when she painted this um, I guess that was many many years ago 13 years ago or so uh, she really captured um, really captured the girls and it's very fun painting that I really really love when I look at it I'm inspired by it so I hope that you too um, surround yourself with images and things and um, nature whatever it is in your life that you, that inspires you and makes you feel you know loved and makes you feel good about life I hope you surround yourself with those things so every day in my home studio I get to see these girls who, who mean so much to me and remind me about all the goodness in the world so that's who they are and that's by Carmel Anderson. So if you're interested in um, looking at um, feminism and art or, or women's study and art, take a look at Carmel Anderson. And she'll, she has some pretty cool things happening. Um, today, we're going to go totally off script. And we are going to uh, work from a book called Start Where You Are. And this is a book I love. There are great quotes from artists and people and historians uh, from throughout time. And the uh, person who has com compiled this and composed this book is Mira Lee Patel, and I just love it. So um, she'll give a quote and then she'll give you prompts to work from. And so one of the things she says in this book is, what was the last thing you gave someone? And she says write about it, but we're gonna make art about it. So I want you to think about, what was the last thing that you gave someone? Was it a something or was it um, love? Was it encouragement? Was it compassion? Um, was it a hard time? I know sometimes at the front desk, people give me a hard time, which, which I enjoy. Um, what was it? Um, or uh, was it a vase of flowers? What, what was it? Um, you know, lots of people have been dropping off gifts and packages and uh, things to, to remind everyone at Oakwood that they're loved. So what was the last thing that you gave someone? And so when I think about what was the last thing that I gave someone, I just gave um, many of my family members masks that I had ordered from one of my Shakespeare students is, uh, has lost her job. She's a, a high school senior and she's lost her job. And so she's very creative and she's very giving and she thinks about others all the time. So one thing that she has done um, in order to pay for college in the fall, she, and she's going into acting and I'm really proud about that, 
um, she is making masks and selling them to help people as well as fund her college education. And so um, when she started making masks about three or four weeks ago, I said, I need a shipment of 40. Can you get me 40 masks? And um, so she, she whipped them right up and made me 40 masks. So I sent those to nine, I think nine different households. Um, and of course I have so many more family members who I didn't get masks for. Um, but those nine households are really out in the public and, and essential workers. And so I wanted to make sure that they had masks. But that's not what I want to make art about. So the thing I, the last thing I gave people before that was um, my grandfather, who was very, very special to me. And uh, also, he is my godfather. He passed away at the end of December. And um, I was asked to deliver his eulogy, one of his eulogies, another um, cousin was asked to give a eulogy as well and it was a very very personal eulogy I remember the father saying at the funeral well Jennifer's gonna get up and say a few short words and I got up and I said I guess the father doesn't know my cousin and I because there is nothing short about our eulogies so very long eulogy about a very great man and one of the things that um, one of the stories from his life is he loved country music he was a musician himself and he loved Johnny Cash, the great Johnny Cash. And so um, back in the 60s, he would go to Tennessee, he'd go to um, down to Nashville, and, and in those days, Nashville was a bit different. And um, I remember he, uh, he and my grandmother and my great aunt, my grandmother's little kid sister, um, went to Nashville, and of course they went looking for Johnny Cash. And, uh, you know, Johnny Cash toured all the time, so why would Johnny Cash be home? So they stopped at the Roy Acuff Museum, and my Grandpa Jack went in and asked the guy behind the counter, hey, do you know where Johnny Cash lives? And the guy behind the counter said, yeah, here he lives out in Hendersonville, and here's how you get there. And so my grandpa was so excited, he left, got in the, said thank you, left, got in the car, and realized that was Roy Acuff sitting behind the counter. So all of you who love country music, you know how big that would have been to realize uh, in hindsight that that was Roy Acuff sitting at the museum. And you would just talk to him, but you didn't realize it was him in the moment. So they then headed out to Johnny Cash's house, and would you believe this? Johnny Cash was in his yard doing yard work. Yeah, big star like Johnny Cash. He was working in his yard. My grandpa got out and said hello to Johnny Cash. And I I say it went a little bit like this. Uh, my, my grandpa said, hello, I'm Jack Tracy. And Johnny Cash said, hello, I'm Johnny Cash. So um, uh, they went back for many years. I heard the next year they went back, which would have been the next year. There was a big gate around, a big fencing gate around Johnny's um around Johnny's house so unfortunately they never got to see him again maybe because uh, other people had done that and my grandpa Jack had done that that Johnny thought mm, I'm a pretty big star I better put up some some fences so anyways I am I I created those eulogies for all my aunts and uncles and my mom and my grandma who miss my grandpa so dearly and I uh, I hand wrote them and I wrapped them in guitar strings because uh, guitars were so important to my grandpa. Wrapped them in guitar strings and then I found these awesome Johnny Cash uh, guitar picks. And they came in a little case with Johnny Cash on them. And uh, so I am going to draw um, just the little pick. That won't be very exciting to draw this Johnny Cash uh, guitar pick that I put in those eulogies. but. Um, what I really want to do is I want to draw my grandfather. So this is just a little catalyst for the next drawing. So this is the last thing that I, the last really important thing that I gave people in my life. And so I'm going to draw that guitar pick. I'm just going to start it right now. I want you to think of something too that you gave to someone. Remember, it doesn't have to be a thing. It can be an idea. It can be encouragement. It can be words that you gave someone and they can inspire you to draw. So um, I'm going to draw this guitar pick in here and it's going to be a reminder that I want to draw my Grandpa Jack and I want to draw him when he was about 19 years old and he was playing and singing his, gu playing, uh, his guitar and singing 
with a band. And so I want to draw that. And when I do draw that, when I get that done, I want to share it with all of you because um, he is really important to who I am and uh, his legacy is so important to me. So for now, I've just started my little Johnny Cash guitar pick here. Nothing fancy, just getting it started, just the shapes. So um, I encourage you to do the same. What was that last thing you gave someone? Okay, um, and share it with me if you will. Send it to me um, by email or just give me an idea. Also, if you'd like to let me know um, or let me know any questions you have for me, any art questions, I'd love to answer them through the videos. So send me an email, jennifer.bethel at oakwoodvillage.net. Okay, and let me see if I can see what we're doing on Monday. I'm not sure what we're doing on Monday, but it will be something from our prompt list again. Let me see if I can find it really quick. Uh, to, on Monday, we're drawing how we feel. So um, whatever it is you feel on Monday when you wake up and when we get together at 11 a.m., let's draw it. Okay, I'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.